Good morning and welcome to Real Women Real Issues. I'm Ardell Bradley and with me today I have Sharon Dumas. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Sharon has a nonprofit, Full and Fabulous. Tell me, what is Full and Fabulous all about? Well, I started Full and Fabulous in 1982 with a borrowed $200 in a dream and I wanted to create a vehicle for plus size women and girls to be able to build their self-esteem. And so 33 years later, wow. that's exactly what we do. We have workshops um, in health, beauty, and self-esteem. Currently, okay. we're working only with plus size girls ages 10 through 21 okay. through our Curvy Girl Project. I wanted to come up with a name that the girls would accept because when you're trying to teach them something that maybe they're not being taught at home, okay. then you have to have something catchy to kind of get their eye. Get their and so attention. the Curvy Girl Project is what we do. We're in four schools currently, Detroit Public Schools and Charter Schools here okay. in Detroit. And then we meet on Saturdays as well at the Samaritan Center. So last okay. Saturday we had 26 young ladies that actually came and they, we teach them modeling because any uh, woman or girl, mm -hmm. regardless mm -hmm. of their size, want to be a model. So that's the they first do. thing we catch them with. And then it's nutrition, behavior modification, exercise, self-esteem, okay. and etiquette. Oh. And etiquette is so important today because when we look at the fashion and the styles and how they've changed, right. we really want our young ladies to be young ladies. Exactly. Um, one of the things that I always have to tell them and to remind them is to sit with their legs closed. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because we wear pants so often until we kind of forget. About it. We, we just don't, we don't remember to, that we have legs. pants on. And when we have a dress, we do the very same thing. And so what we are doing is grooming these young ladies to be great for one, but right. then also to always act like a lady. And to me, that's, that's so important good. today. How do you get your funding for your program? We actually have uh, fundraisers, different fundraisers, but then also the City of Detroit Health Department, um, they sponsor us. We've had okay, a state good. funding. And it's been small funding. We're really looking for larger funders um, okay. as well as people to donate to our organization. And how mm -hmm. did you get into this? Actually, I grew up as a plus size girl and it was very difficult for me. Okay. But currently, I work with girls 300 pounds or more. I was 170 pounds at the time. Wow. And um, it was so hard for me that I wanted to create something that would help the girls who went through the same thing that I went through, okay. or would go through what I went through. Now, so do, you I started. do you incorporate, um, say for instance, your young lady, 300 mm -hmm. pounds, obviously that's not healthy. No. And we do want to keep health, you know, help um, the uh, self-esteem high, I should say. But in turn, we want to keep health high on the totem flow also. Do you advocate them eating right, exercising, and trying to lose some weight? or do you maintain them having self-esteem at the size that they are? You know what I've uh, found in 33 years is that if um, losing weight was about just pushing away from the table, then we wouldn't have a nation full of overweight people. Correct. Um, so the first thing we do is we build their self-esteem. Sometimes they come from homes where they're not loved or they don't feel loved, that they're ridiculed at school and at home. And so the first thing we do is we love on them. You know, okay. we make them feel good about themselves. And then we teach them how to read food labels, uh, nutrition, behavior modification, okay. exercise. So definitely, but I believe that if you start from the inside out, that it will be a lifestyle change instead of just losing weight and losing gaining weight. weight back. Now, when they come to you, do they stay at, from the beginning to the end? If they come, you said 12 is the starting age? 10. 10 mm -hmm. is the starting age, and they'll stay with your program through 21? Actually, they can stay for a lifetime. So we have uh, people who are in their 40s now that come back oh, that was in, their pro it was in the program, okay. and they come back and they give to our program as their time and sometimes funding for the program or just volunteering for the program. So it's really a lifetime once they come to the program. Okay. Um, Monica Morgan, the photographer, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. was a part of Went our program in 1982, actually. Okay. Um, Coco came through our program so mm -hmm. when I started I worked with plus-size women okay. and I really thought that they would go home and teach their daughters but I realized that didn't That's happen and so my ultimate goal was actually to work with girls because if you start young they'll grow into uh, making healthy choices. Now do you, are you looking to get into more schools? Are you okay where you are? How are you advertising yourself? How are you getting out there? Because this is my first time hearing about you. How do you let people know who you are and where you are and how we can get involved? A lot of times it's word of mouth, but we advertise. We have a um, website. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page. We have the young people doing our Twitter and all okay. of that. Um, and so basically it's word of mouth. This year we worked with uh, about 80 girls. Okay. Um, total and we have our plus-size debutante ball coming up in August okay. and so the girls will go through. Thank you 
We'll be right back, but first, we're going to go to Jungle Juice for the Juice of the Week. Thank you, Ardell. I'm Regenia Hunter Coleman. And I'm Saria Hunter Das. Today, we will be juicing watermelon. Watermelon is an all time favorite. It's se the new season is starting in July and it's very high in nutrients. And the thing about it is often we tend to cut the rind away and throw that part away and only eat the meat of the watermelon. But 92% of the nutrients are actually in the rind. And as humans, it's very difficult for us to eat the rind. So a nice way to get your nutrients is to juice the entire watermelon, including the rind. All right, let's get started. And you just put the whole thing in there. You see we're doing the rind and all. The rind is also great for blood flow with red watermelon. Speaking of blood flow, I read an article in National Geographic News, and it says that watermelon is actually Mother Nature's, Mother Nature's version of Viagra. So it's known to be an aphrodisiac. And for those of you who may find that the rind is not quite as sweet as you want it to be, one of the things I do sometimes is I'll add a little bit of pineapple or grape juice to it, and it sweetens it up, and it's really good, and you still get your nutrients. All right, I'm excited about this. Let's give it a try. You can also freeze strawberries and use the strawberries as ice. It's a great summer drink. Oh, this is great. This is delicious. Come join us at Jungle Juice Bar for a glass of watermelon juice. And remember, and remember, your, your health, health is your wealth. Try the juice of the week and much more at the Jungle Juice Bar. The Jungle Juice Bar is located on Charlevoix in Gross Point Park. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. When we sit down together, we share our expertise. You've got a legal problem, we know you need relief. Advice that you can trust, that's why people come to us. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. We fix hearts, we fix heads, we do eyes and ears, noses and throats. In fact, more children come to Children's Hospital than any other hospital in the state. Stop the headaches, stop the pain. Fix the tummies, the ankles, the toes, and fingers. Emergency? When it's your child, don't settle for less. Trust the pediatric ER experts at the Children's Hospital of Michigan at the DMC. The ER at Children's Hospital. Always there, just for them. My friends, I want to introduce you to Samasco Financial. As attorneys, they worked hard to protect clients on a legal basis, only to watch many lose their money in the unpredictable and risky stock market. Samasco Financial has recognized the need for asset protection for our seniors and has introduced investment planning that will grow your nest egg without the risk of loss. To find out more about how Samasco Financial can protect your financial future, call 586-493-9989. Real Women, Real Issues is brought to you by Mike's Fresh Market. Welcome back to Real Women, Real Issues. I have Sharon Dumas here from Full and Fabulous. Thank you again. You're welcome. Tell me, what does it mean to be full and fabulous? What does it mean to me to be full and fabulous? That means okay. that you're confident in who you are, and when you step outside your home, that you're looking appropriate and feeling fine. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about clothing. Okay. Being full and fabulous, are there some things that you should not wear? Yes, for sure. <laughs> for sure. It looks like fashion has taken um, a really uh, big turn when it comes to full-figured women. Okay. Um, I find that we're dressing like the smaller woman, even though it's mm. not appropriate for our size. One of my pet peeves are the stretch pants. Um, the leggings. All the leggings. Yes. The, especially the thin ones because they're so thin sometimes ladies don't wear underclothes and it's just not appropriate and that's then not. sometimes they wear underclothes that are colorful <laughs> and that's not, uh, that's not good and then they don't wear shirts that are long enough the shirt should come down at least above right. the knee to cover up all of that so it looks right. like leggings for real so those things I would say to women that we could do better than that 
you know, when you're a full-figure woman, you already have people ridiculing you, and you don't mm -hmm. want to do anything that's going to make it worse. Not okay. to say you're not supposed to feel confident about who you are, right. but some things are just not appropriate. Another pet peeve of mine uh -oh. are the, um, the new um, halter tops, and some of the women are now wearing them with just the bra showing. Oh, yes. I and that is just so not appropriate, especially for our size. And then some women are wearing the halter tops where they're not wearing a strapless Undercut. bra with it. Mm -hmm. I saw a lady actually yesterday, and she had on a, um, a halter top dress mm -hmm. and no, no bra, underwear. and her breast was large, and she had footprints tattooed Ugh. up there. And it's just, it's just not appropriate for our size. So we really want to try to dress Appropriately, appropriately mm -hmm. for our size. Now and you discuss this in your seminars. And definitely, your, okay. definitely with our young girls we talk about fashion and when and how to wear makeup. Okay. Um, uh, another pet peeve of mine, I hate to keep saying pet peeve, but a lot of times women wear clothes that are too tight and they mm -hmm. think that, you know, sometimes men are attracted to it but I've found in my 33 years that it's the wrong kind of guy. It's not the kind of not guy the kind you want. that you really want. So if you can't really breathe in it, and <laughs> that's, and a sign that's the truth. That that's a sign good. that it's just a little bit too tight. And right. I found that if you wear it a little loose, that it's more appropriate and you don't attract more such attractive. negative attention as well. Correct. But again, we're confident women and we can really wear what we want, but you still want to look Professional classy. and approach and, and classy, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We, um, you brought up your Curvy Girl Project. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. The Curvy Girl Project is uh, we work with plus size girls, as I said, ages 10 through 21, and we take them through our health, beauty, and self esteem workshops. And the end result, you can always tell a young lady that's been through our program because she dressed appropriately, for one. Okay. Um, because we really pound that into their heads that mm -hmm. if you're already getting negative comments, you want to dress appropriately so you're not attracting that negative comment to you. Right. Um, but also we have a plus size debutante ball that the girls go through and we push them um, on stage. They have to do talent. Uh, we have a rite of passage okay. where the girls receive their first set of pearls on stage from their moms. We're really excited. Sam's Club is one of our sponsors and they okay. always send at least 10 of their male um, managers from all over the state of Michigan to Escort. stand in for the men, the fathers who are missing in the homes. So they come in their tuxedos and our girls are in um, gowns. Awesome. They have to wear gowns. They can't wear white or black or sequent. Okay. We really want our girls, and I tell them all the time, if you're 12, I need you to act 12, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. 16. If you're mm -hmm. 15, I need you to act 15 and not 20. And right. so we try to keep them as girls, girls so that they can learn some things. And when they become women, then they're already armed with some things that will help them throughout their life. Thank you, Sharon, for being here again. And we'll be back for more Real Women, Real Issues. Stress depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Team is by far, uh, from my estimation, a premier mental health service organization. Uh, we are addressing the basic needs and the mental health concerns of our consumers. We're able to provide 24-hour psychiatric care when needed. Team Mental Health Services prides itself on going the extra mile for its members. And it was towards the sixth court date. Um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Opportunity, it doesn't stare you in the face. It's not going to yell at you to come and get it. It doesn't knock. So what does opportunity look like? Not what you might think. You see, opportunity is not a right. It's definitely not equal. And it doesn't come with an instruction manual. That's because opportunity isn't found. It's molded. It's built. It's created. It's as much about grit as it is intellect. An explosive high-tech corridor located at the intersection of muscle and brains? <laughs> you bet. Because opportunity only comes to those already in the game. What does opportunity look like? 
it looks like Detroit. Opportunity made in Detroit. Welcome back to Real Women, Real Issues. I have therapist Sylvia Thompson here with me today. Welcome. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Yes. I want to talk about stress today. Okay. I have a lot of it. You know, okay. I work several jobs. I have children, house to maintain, personal life, everything that goes along with that. What should I do to release some of my stress? Well, first of all, you have to understand what stress is really emanating from. And a lot of it has to do with the balancing mm -hmm. of your roles, your expectations, your duties, your responsibilities okay. throughout your life. Okay. And whenever anything kind of shifts or changes, mm -hmm. that will create stress That's for you. True. And thus, some responses, which sometimes can be debilitating and sometimes can be very, very alarming creating some more severe problems related to mental health. And as we know, all health, including mental health, it must be maintained in order to continue our daily routines and activities in our lives because health and wellness is what our main particular goal is. Well, give me some examples of things that I should do okay. to release the stress. Well, one of the things you might want to make note of is what really joy brings you joy in your life okay. and sometimes when women have such a busy schedule they really almost have to schedule in those activities and True. and and not feel guilty about saying okay I'm gonna spend time going to a movie or visiting a friend mm -hmm. or sending a note or looking at a computer program right. that you're trying to you know begin to gain some competencies with so you have to learn how to schedule things in because they just aren't going to emanate with free time right, being right, offered right, in your right. schedules because as you know there is no free, free time. time that no, is not not at all yeah so scheduling is is really one in planning that time where you can spend Enjoying doing things yourself. you enjoy which increases sense. your feelings about yourself makes sense mm -hmm. well how long have you been a therapist well I've been in social work and mental health for over 40 years. Now, have you seen so, a change? Yes. Uh, as we, as you explain, and everyone, <laughs> every woman knows, our mental health has been more challenging for okay. women, and stress levels have risen. Okay. And many women now, uh, compared to when I began, talk about stress related to, believe it or not, income, money versus men which talk about work. Uh, so women are working, okay. but maybe they're not getting the compensations that are needed in order to not be have that filled, to have that stress. Okay. So that is one thing that they do talk about. Okay. They also uh, maintain uh, an interest or discussions on relationships. Women do. Women do, quality relationships with their partners, mm -hmm. uh, with family, with friends, with other, you know, persons in their right. community right. or in their circle of relationships. So wanting to maintain relationships are very key for women. They're okay. very relationship oriented. And I think mm -hmm. also you should want to break away, not even just for a couple of hours. I think you need to get away. Because yes. if you're still in the same surroundings, in the same area, those things that are stressing you are right there. Right. But if you take a vacation and get mm -hmm. away, and I know mm -hmm. everybody can't always afford to go right. away, spend a week in Cancun or Jamaica, somewhere right. on the beach. But um, just getting away, even if you say a staycation, as people mm -hmm. term it, mm -hmm. go to mm -hmm. a, a hotel locally yes. and turn off your cell phone and, you know, just relax and do something that you want to do. something that you enjoy doing. Uh, the other thing that more women are doing are, are getting more engaged in physical activities, okay. you know, uh, such as walking, running, exercise, which mm -hmm. is very key. Mm -hmm. So there's more physicality involved in what they're doing. It's not just reading, watching movies, you know, right. they're really out there, you know, working out. out, working out. We're going to hear more about stress and releasing that after we get our skin care tip of the week from Dr. Shauna Diggs. We are beautiful in every single way. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Shauna Diggs with your skin care tip for the week. Today we're going to discuss hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating. So in the summertime, we often start to have more perspiration under our arms, on our body, on our hands and feet, and sometimes even on our face. What should we do for this? There are a couple choices. One, antiperspirants that are over the counter do work. They tend to be sold one to three percent. So they help to some extent, but not as much as we sometimes need. We can also get antiperspirants or aluminum chloride solutions in stronger concentrations over the counter. Certain Dry is a brand name product that has a higher concentration and is more effective. It comes in roll-ons and a pad that you can use every night to decrease the perspiration or sweating in your arms during the day. We can also use a medication called Xerac AC. Xerac is a stronger concentration, about 8.5%, so it works even better. As a prescription product, I can give you Drysol, and Drysol is a 20% that you use every night and it makes you not perspire as much during the day. We can also use Botox or Dysport to help with perspiration. Botox has been FDA approved for this purpose and it can be injected into your hands, your feet, or under your arms and usually the effects last five to six months with less perspiration. This is Dr. Shauna Diggs with your skin care tip for the week. To learn more about Cosmetic Derm and their revolutionary skincare products and services, please visit drshaunadiggs.com. Mike's Fresh Market, Detroit's largest independent supermarket with the best prices, quality, and service. Enjoy our vast selection of fresh fruits and vegetables. Wide aisles lead you to our own in-house bakery and deli. Beef, pork, chicken, seafood, and much more. You can rest assured you will feed your family the freshest food in town. Whatever you need, you can find it here at Mike's Fresh Market. Mike's Fresh Market with two locations, Gratiot and Seven Mile and Livernois and Seven Mile. Better food, better prices. That's Mike's promise. ETX Closed Captioning is sponsored by the Detroit Seafood Market. Welcome back. I have Sylvia here. and We're talking about stress and things we can do to relieve it. And I wanted to um, get some to find out from you. Do you find that there are women younger or older who are really coming to you to get help, to get some release? Well, there's all ages. And again, as you may know, may have experienced mm -hmm. through our life, that stress looks different at different ages and different stages in our life. Okay. So when you're in childhood, a stressful in incident might be not having friends in school, mm -hmm. you know, and complaining to your parent or parents about that right. particular lack. Right. Uh, when you're adolescent, again, the whole issue of Changes. those hormones, uh, you know, increasing, developing, it's about boys and boyfriends and, mm -hmm. and my gender, my identity, right. am I good enough, am I beautiful enough, you know, can I get that, can I get this, I have what will enhance girls, me, so I can you, you know, so all of this is, is stressful and right. maybe is. a parent uh, might see that as, oh, that's not important, you outgrow it. This is the time to really kind of have a talk, begin talking all okay. along at these stressful periods okay. uh, in, in your girl's life. Another time for women is pregnancy. Mm -hmm. For some that's a joy, but for others it may be sadness, it may be dismay, it, it may be just complete upset and turmoil in their life and in their lifestyle. Right. So the time of the pregnancies uh, and dealing with childbirth mm -hmm. uh, can, can be an issue. And of course, if it continues, it can look like postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And many women do talk about baby blues in the first year. And right. usually, it, you know, it, it yeah. subsides and, okay. you know, as you go on. You get adjusted. Yeah, you get adjusted. Okay. And another particular stage that uh, stress looks different uh -huh. is uh, what we call menopause. 
Yes, and so here we have another age where we're doing some change <laughs> and hormones are you know, right. decreasing mm -hmm. in one area in, in relationships in your life. It looks differently at changing mm -hmm. there with empty nest children going off you know, to college, right. getting married, going on about their way and there you are, you know, what shall I do? And then of course senior years, mm. uh, which is, is another very fruitful time in life, but it for is. so many, you know, the way retirements are being presented to people or the way they have to leave jobs might be entirely different, different and also stressful. might be stressful and create some anxiety and depression. So all these little periods, stages can create some stressful incidents. So the transitions need to be looked at very closely and, you know, tied back to what's going on in terms of my stages. And where but I it's part life. of life. But it's I, that's part how of I life. Look at it. And yes. how you address it is yes, the most important. Is right, how you cope There's with it. There's always going to be stress. There's always going to be something there, just yes. like you just named five, six different mm -hmm, stages mm -hmm. of life. And in between those stages, there are other things that yes. may stress that yes. come in. Yes. But you have to know how to approach, approach it, it, how to deal with it, right. and to move on. Right. And the best thing for this is balance. Right. You know, the balance is very important in your life, you know, with emotional, social, spiritual. Uh, physical, right. and, you know, well-being and balance. So you have to, you know, and we're great at this. Women are great at balancing <laughs> different roles and, all and activities all the time. So here again, it's a way of looking at one of our strengths that we can put out there to get right. help. Now, sometimes you may need some help. So True. there's where uh, therapy might mm -hmm. be very important, counseling. Uh, guidance, something that will help to spur you to get you to kind of look at what's going on and tie that in with other activities that have gone on. And I on. think knowing that it's only a phase, it's yes. only a period, right? and once you go on to the next phase or period, period. you'll be fine. Right, you'll but be fine. But then there's going to be something else that comes yes. along that you'll have to deal with. Always. But then you get your mechanisms together, right. know how to handle it, right? and then it's called life. Called, called life. And there's an interesting statistic that uh, has been developed by U.S. Department of mm -hmm. Health and Human Services that uh, at least a half of issues with mental illness occur before the age of 14. So that's why that, that's that childhood and yeah, it, you know, people kind of say, oh, you know, the kid's just being a kid or just growing up and having the, I did it and I managed it. But, you know, everyone is different. So you need pay to pay attention, attention to every nuance in there. Absolutely. And then of course, b uh, by the age of 24, at least three-fourths or 75 percent of mental illness uh, has, occurred. has occurred. Thank you again, Sylvia, for You're being welcome. here and these wonderful tips on how to de-stress our lives. And thank you for tuning in to Real Women, Real Issues. We'll see you next week.